Welcome to the vCloud Automation Center demo, Managing VMware Hybrid Cloud Services with vCloud Automation Center. In this video, we are going to show you how vCloud Automation Center discovers, provisions, and manages VMware Hybrid Cloud Infrastructure Services. There are several videos on vCloud Automation Center Infrastructure Fabric Management and Service Authoring, but this video is specific to VMware Hybrid Cloud Services. The Infrastructure Administrator is the person who defines the managed endpoints that are required to interact and discover the infrastructure resources. vCloud Automation Center discovers and manages the underlying compute fabric through the device manager that manages those resources. To communicate with these device managers, the admin defines managed endpoints for each virtual, physical, or public cloud device manager. This sets up the initial discovery as well as ongoing discovery which happens daily by default. The infrastructure administrator defines a managed endpoint which will be used to talk with the VCHS device manager with the appropriate location and credentials needed to access each vCenter instance. This information is stored encrypted in the Automation Center repository. VCAC then discovers the compute resources and policies provided by VCHS. In the case of VCHS, those resources are virtual data centers and the software-defined service associated with those virtual data centers. Policies include things like vApp templates, which control how a machine will be provisioned. You will need a separate endpoint for each virtual data center within your VCHS deployment. Endpoints can be defined one at a time via the management console or imported in bulk via a CSV file. Let's look at defining an endpoint for VCHS. Under the Infrastructure tab, click on Endpoints. Then, hover over New Endpoint and select Cloud, vApp, vCloud Director. Enter a name and description for the VCHS endpoint. For the Address field, we'll need to log in to VCHS to gather the correct URL. Let's log into VCHS to see where we can get that URL. Once you are logged into VCHS, you will see a list of virtual data centers under the Dashboard tab. Today, we will be adding the vCloud Automation Virtual Data Center. Click on the Organization Virtual Data Center to drill down into the details. On the right-hand side of the Virtual Data Center Details page, click on the vCloud Director API URL link. This will display the URL that you will need to paste into the VCHS endpoint address field within VCAC. Copy the URL and then switch back to VCAC. You will need additional information from VCHS later in the process, so you may want to keep this window open in a separate browser tab. Let's switch back to VCAC to enter the URL into the endpoint configuration window. Paste the URL you copied from the VCHS administration portal but then remove everything after the port number in the URL. Next, we'll need to define credentials. Click the ellipsis to the right of the credentials area. As you can see, we have a lot of credentials already defined. If credentials haven't already been entered for VCHS, click the New Credentials button. When creating new credentials, enter a name, description, and the username and password for the VCHS account. This will only need to be done once per VCHS account, as a single credential can be used to define multiple VCHS endpoints. The username and password field are stored encrypted. In this example, we have already defined credentials for VCHS, which we can see here. Select the VCHS credentials and then click OK. Next, we'll need to configure the Organization field, which is case sensitive. To ensure we specify the correct name and case, let's switch back to VCHS. Towards the top right, click the Edit VDC Name and Description link. This will bring up a window showing the correct name and case for this virtual data center. Copy the name and let's switch back to VCAC. Paste the case sensitive virtual data center name into the organizational field in the endpoint definition and then click OK. This will save your endpoint definition and start the initial discovery process. 
At this time, VCAC only discovers the virtual data center, not all the resources in it, so discovery should complete in a matter of seconds. To gather everything within this endpoint, let's perform a data collection. Hover over the VCHS endpoint and select Data Collection. In the next window, click Start to begin the data collection. You'll be returned to the list of endpoints again. If you want to monitor the status of the data collection, return to Data Collection and click the Refresh button to see the up-to-date status of the data collection. When it's done, you can click Cancel to return to the endpoint configuration area. After the VCHS virtual data centers are discovered, they are not automatically placed under vCloud Automation Center's control. To place these resources under VCAC's control, these resources need to be associated with a fabric group. There is a separate video on fabric group management. In this video, we'll show you how to add the VCHS virtual data center to an existing fabric group. Within the infrastructure tab in VCAC, Navigate to Groups, Fabric Groups. Here we have the ability to assign the VCHS endpoint we just created to one or more fabric groups. Click on the fabric group that you would like to associate with our VCHS endpoint. Under the Compute Resources area, you can select the VCHS endpoint. Click OK when finished. You'll see how the VCHS compute resources have been assigned to the fabric group. The Infrastructure Administrator reserves resources from the Fabric Group to be used by one or more business groups. The next step in this video is to reserve a portion of the VCHS Virtual Data Center for use by one of our existing business groups. Next, we are going to define a reservation which will assign the resources of the VCHS endpoint to a specific business group. Within the Infrastructure tab, navigate to Resources Reservations. Hover over New Reservation and select Cloud vApp vCloud Director. First, choose a compute resource, which in this case comes from the VCHS endpoint we added earlier. Optionally, you can customize the name that is automatically generated. Next, choose the tenant you wish to associate this compute resource with and also the specific business group within that tenant. Optionally, you can specify a reservation policy and machine quota. Choose a priority for this reservation and specify any custom properties. Click on the Resources tab. Here, we'll define the amount of RAM and storage that we want to allocate from the VCHS endpoint to our business group. Make sure to click the green check when you are finished specifying the storage amount and priority. Click on the Network tab and specify a network path and then optionally a network profile. You can also specify alerts for this reservation via the Alerts tab, but for now we're going to leave the options as is. Click OK to finish defining the reservation. The last step in this process is to create an infrastructure service or machine blueprint. Please refer to some of the other videos available that demonstrate how to author VCAC services publish to the service catalog, and entitle users access to specific services. VCAC can provision a VAP as a single entity, but manage the component VMs individually. In order to enable this functionality, the VCAC admin needs to configure blueprints for both component VMs as well as the VAP blueprint. The VAP component blueprints policies control how the machine will be provisioned, how much resources it can consume, and which management functions users are allowed to perform. The VAP blueprint provides governance policies which limit attributes of the multi-machine VAP. For example, the MAC number of machines of each type. First, let's walk through the creation of a VAP component blueprint. Within the Infrastructure tab, navigate to the Blueprints, Blueprints area. Hover over New Blueprint and select Cloud, VAP Component, vCloud Director. When creating a new VApp component blueprint, it might be useful to help browse the available VApp component templates 
within the build information area first. Choose a blueprint type, action, and provisioning workflow. Then, click the ellipsis in the clone from area to see a list of available VApp component templates. Select the VApp component template and click OK. From there, you will be able to choose the various machining resources, including the minimum and maximum values for number of CPUs, memory, and storage. In addition, you can customize the existing storage volumes or add additional volumes. Under the Blueprint Information tab, at a minimum, specify a name and machine prefix. When finished, verify the remaining options within the Blueprint. When you're finished, click OK. Scrolling down, we can see the new blueprint that we just created. Next, let's create a VApp blueprint. Within the Blueprints area, hover over New Blueprint and select Cloud, VApp, vCloud Director. As with a VApp component blueprint, it might help to start on the Build Information tab where you can browse directly to the VApp template you wish to clone from. Upon selecting the VApp template, you'll then see a list of component blueprints. Click the Edit icon and then select the component blueprint we created earlier. Don't forget to click the green check to save. Under the Blueprint Information tab, fill out all the required fields. You can then review the information on the remaining tabs one final time before clicking OK. Upon clicking OK, our VApp Blueprint will now be created and can be exposed to the service catalog. Please refer to the video on creating catalog items for further instruction on how this is done. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We hope that it was informative. To learn more about vCloud Automation Center, there are additional videos available.